So hello everybody and welcome to Flamingo. So normally on Flamingo I find myself having more like creative conversations but today we're going to focus on academics because I've been joined by my really good friend Alicia Sharma. So me and Alicia met when we were aged 11 at school and we've been friends ever since but Alicia you're actually working at the University of Southampton as a scientific researcher and you're also training, well studying, for your PhD in science. So what exactly are you researching or the topic of your PhD? Well um, I'm sure maybe a lot of you have heard of osteoporosis. Well I'm working on another bone disease um, called Paget C's of bone. Okay. So it's the second most common bone disease and um, currently I'm just looking at the bone itself and the geometry of bone um, oh. and seeing whether I can assess it um, for like future treatment. That's oh. what I'm doing so far. So in the end it could help yeah, I mean that's the goal for sure. Our group is looking at a specific perspective of this disease, wow. so hopefully we do find something. And you're like one of the young, you're the young, at age 22 you're the youngest in the group, are you? In my office group, yeah. So, um, wow! Yeah, so like, how are you, the you working group. together to hopefully come up? So we're split into loads of different groups, so yeah. um, I've actually got a supervisor who's specifically in biomedical science, but then I've got two engineering supervisors because okay. I'm doing bioengineering. Um, and we have two different groups essentially. So one group, there's only like um, about five of us, but then whereas like in the office that I'm working in, there's like probably like 15 people in there. Really? So it's quite nice. So we work, we have like different um, like group projects and things, and you kind of intercalate between different studies um, to help each other out, which is quite nice. Oh, that's so, nice. so it all overlaps, and you can all help yeah. each other. So it takes actually 18 months for you to gain your PhD. So well, no, 18 months is halfway. Oh, so halfway! <laughs> halfway, unfortunately. Well, for me, so the PhD projects are different. Um, you can have three, four-year projects. Okay. If you go to like America, they can be longer. Yeah. It depends where you go. But um, yeah, mine's three years, uh, three which is good for me. She's at the halfway point. <laughs> I reached okay. halfway, um, and I've got 18 months to go. So <gasps> Very, very yeah. exciting. How are you find it, though? It's tough. So first year is actually quite nice. It's kind okay. of like when you go do your BSc in first year. So that's your Bachelor easier, of kind Science. Of, yeah, yeah, my Bachelor of Science. Um, it's quite nice to do um, your first year. It's kind of like eased in. I felt kind of the same with my PhD. It was kind of a nice transition. But it was hard because I went from doing biochemistry to bioengineering. So yeah, so your PhD is actually in engineering, but you were first studied biochemistry. Yes, yeah, so that was tough. Um, I had to do some engineering modules at the start, and um, I was sitting in with first years who were like, why on earth are you... <laughs> A PhD student in these first year modules, and I was like, oh, it's because I've like transitioned. But um, yeah, I've enjoyed. I really enjoyed learning. It's really challenging, um, yeah. massively. Um, it's really tests you um, to like the limit. I think. Yeah. But um, I have enjoyed it. I love the people around me, so it's really good. Well, that's so good. And you've actually had the opportunity to go to Belgium and Switzerland as part of your research. Yeah. I've so been quite why? Lucky. Yeah. Why did you go there, and what, what was the aim of that? So in Belgium, I went to the Herbert Fleisch conference. So okay. um, it's where you present your. So I was presenting our work. Um, I went with someone else in my group as well, who's presenting their work. Um, and Switzerland was really cool. So um, we had like a proposal where you could like. Um, you go use synchrotron source, so it's like the Philips, uh, it's the PSI Institute, which is like a synchrotron where you have. Uh, you say words, and I don't even know what they mean. I know, I was trying to, uh, <laughs> to like, you know, uh, use late terms to it. simplify it. So basically, high energy x rays, yeah. like a CT scan, um, just to look at my samples. That's what I was doing. Um, wow. So I worked on that. So it was really, really cool. But it's obviously very, very high tech. Yeah, very high tech. Um, it's one of those experiments where you have a really lack of, like, you don't really sleep at all. And your mind, oh. you go crazy. Like, the typical stereotype of a scientist going crazy. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> I remember you texted me last um, week and she was like, I have to stay awake for 72 <laughs> hours crazy. to do this like, experiment. It was madness. So, yeah, it was... It's good fun. And it's... Um, when you've got a good group of people, it's good to, like, yeah. sleep, like... To be with that group of people and you can't, you get to know them to their limit as well like um, yeah. lack of sleep really pushes you yeah but um it is it was what definitely worth it i'm kind of looking yes. forward to analyzing the stuff we've got no so. yeah then you just take it further wow and yeah you've got to see so many places and do so many amazing things with so many people and you're obviously passionate about it and you all are in that group together so yeah, you must definitely. all pull each other through when you're in testing situations but as we did say earlier, we actually met at school. Yeah. So apart from a brief time, Alicia really wanted to be an actress. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Very briefly. Um, you, I've always found that you were really interested in science. So why do you think science appealed to you? 
over acting do you think or just in general just in general i don't know I think or when you had to pick like what you would do yeah i remember having meetings with like um our tutors and stuff being like actress or scientist <laughs> what's wrong with you why are they so different but um yeah i think i don't know when it came to acting i just loved performing i used to be on stage loved it um but when it was science just learning about the body um the more i did uh, biology the more i did like chemistry the more i just loved that specific kind of topic and then uh, my brother was ill when he was younger and originally I looked at doing medicine yeah. because of being in like the hospital quite a lot so yeah, I think it just changed my perspective and I eventually just enjoyed science more so that's why I went into science. <laughs> wow! Um, so I don't know at school I found science quite a challenging subject however you were always so determined to do so well in it like maybe you didn't always get the best marks but you were so determined so why do you think you wanted to build a career out of it like you said your brother was unfortunately ill when he was younger but he's fine now um but yeah how did you go about doing that well i think you're definitely right i think if you looked at me when i was younger i was not the most um <laughs> i was not very keen for education and um, that was not who i was but i think the more like i said the more i got older the more i looked into what i wanted to do yeah um i had a great teacher honestly um I just remember, like, if you have a good teacher, it really helps, like, you enjoy the subject. Yeah. But, yeah, I used to just read on the side, like, extra, like, articles, get interested in the topic, and then I just wanted to learn more. And just through that, yeah. like, my passion kind of grew. You just had, like, the hunger for knowledge. So, yeah, so it now, just, like, just really grew massively. So, <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't think a lot of people would have thought I went to do this. No. So, it's quite I cool. think it was, like... It was ex like, you couldn't surprise me, but, like, yeah, it was, like, unexpected. If you were to pick a classroom for the people... Maybe yeah, it, would, it wouldn't have been me. It would teacher. not have been me. To be the one at age 22 studying to do a PhD. But no, it's fantastic. It's so amazing. Like, when you talk about it, you obviously have so much knowledge and so much passion for it. So I hope I have the knowledge. No, you do. You do. <laughs> it's going to work and your experiment will go well. Um, so, um, so you always said to me, like you just said before, um, that you wanted to be involved with science because it has the ability to help people. Do you think now that's still why it's a really important subject? I think it's a mass massively. Um, yeah. The more research we're doing, it helps a vast majority of different things, not just in the medical field, but technology is advancing. It's everywhere. Um, science is a big, just a big general yeah. concept, so it covers a lot of things. And the more study and research that goes into it, the more um, we learn out of it. So 100%, it's not just helping people, it's um, in a medical way, it's helping people, just their quality of life in general. Yeah, so. it's just making everybody better just by doing the things that you're doing like the small little experiments. So mine's very niche yeah but if you add them collectively together, together in your group then not even just in the group if you put all the groups together outside just engineering then you've got biochemistry biomedical science biology ecology everything if you put them together that's a big research group already wow so as we did say earlier your uh, bachelor of science degree is actually in biochemistry yes so you mentioned briefly you found the transition to engineering a bit kind of tricky Definitely. But why did you go about doing so? Because you kind of, normally people do, I don't know, a bachelor's, then a master's, and a PhD, but you kind of skipped a step. So, so why yeah, did you make that choice? <laughs> so I was quite lucky. I was looking at doing um, a master's elsewhere, actually. Um, uh -huh. And then a su my supervisor approached me and actually suggested me for this PhD. Um, and I looked into the project, and yeah. I've always had an interest in bioengineering, always have. And I've always enjoyed a challenge, always wanted to do something different. And after reading the project, and how I could relate to it clinically with the disease. I just thought this is perfect for me and um, went for it. Like, I just went for it. And it's been like, it's you definitely the best it's, decision. It's yeah. definitely the best decision I've, definitely the best decision I've done, so. Wow, yeah, well, you've got to do so many amazing things and your projects will definitely, hopefully help in the long run to so, doing yeah. all these things. Wow, so eventually, after you've achieved your PhD, you, I know your end goal is to be a patent attorney so could you please explain a bit about what that is and how you go about achieving that? So yeah, I, I have a lot of questions like, oh my god, you're doing a PhD and now you just want to be an attorney, what? That's crazy. Um, but with the what I found through my PhD is I like the diverse range of topics. So I like being able to look at so many different topics. And with yeah. being a patent attorney, you can look at, you specialise in your field, so it'll be in biotechnology um, and I'll be able to work with clients and look at their inventions, their newest 
inventions, maybe if they've made a new drug for a new disease, I'll be able to patent and protect that like specific drug. Oh. So um, for me, that's really fascinating and that's what I want to pursue. Definitely, and then no one else can copy it and it can get taken to the market that's and exactly people it. can buy it. That's exactly right. Wow! <laughs> um, so for anybody who may be watching, who may be interested in science or may think, oh, that's too difficult, I could never do that, what advice would you give them? Well, honestly, I if you honestly met me when I was at school, you would have not ever thought I would have gone into science, honestly. Um, so I just think if you've got a passion for science, keep reading, yeah. keep um, keep working hard at it. You just have to work hard. You don't have to naturally um, be gifted. You can just keep working hard. I think that's what I always say for you. Like determination, determination is hard such working. a hard working person. That's that's all you need, I yeah. think. And if you're passionate about it, then you will fly in. Yeah. and go through it so get those grades that you achieved in your exams at school or even now like through all your degrees and stuff like you've obviously put in the hours of the time and the dedication to do it and that's what it takes i think with anything definitely and you're definitely proof of that so thank you okay now we have a bit of a fun question okay. so uh, to test see if alicia's a real scientist maybe some of you may have watched the big bang theory um okay. but of all the characters in that so they've kind of tried to make science a bit cool and relatable on a tv program so what character would you say you're most relate to, most similar to Ooh, on the okay. Big Bang Theory? Most relatable to? Oh, that is tough. Um, if you're going to talk about personality, I mean, maybe Howard because he's a bit crazy and um, Key's always kind of the funny guy. I think <laughs> in the group, that's kind of my, I was the yeah. idiot of the group, if that makes sense. Um, but make then it, make the jokes, make it fun. I don't know, but then he's not got a PhD, <laughs> so I mean, I can't be Howard. So I don't know. I, I guess Amy does neuroscience. Maybe a mix of maybe a mix of all of them. Mix um, all of them together. If I can look like Penny, then great, <laughs> I'll take that. But um, no, yeah. Um, honestly, that that would be tough to choose. Uh, yeah. I love I love all the characters to be honest. Yeah, it's so relatable. It's probably good for you to see like something that you're doing on the screens. And then yeah, it's a good laugh. It. It's actually. Um, <laughs> I think it's quite sad. relatable. I, I don't know. know. It's sad when I understand some of their jokes and I'm like, should I be laughing at this part of the program? I don't know. But no, um, it's great. Go watch it if you haven't watched it. Big Bang Theory. Lots so fun. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and all your. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, you? of course. All your studies with your PhD and everything. Of course, I wish you the best of luck. And um, you're going to keep on telling us how it goes and things like this. Um, so I just want to say, I think it was very familiar of you to just, like, as we have kept on mentioning throughout this video, to just keep on following your passions and be determined and do as you are within achieving the sciences. That's fantastic. So thank you for sharing that with all of us. And of course, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed my chat with Alicia. And please do, if you haven't already, subscribe, follow, like and share to Flamingo at This Is Flamingo.